Well, welcome back to a new video. Today, I've come to the Sutherland pre-World War II car show, but I won't hang around talking. We've got to go and look at the cars. Well, it's looking like a very promising day. I can already see some beautiful cars I'm really looking forward to having a look at. I should probably mention that before the war, most of the cars in Australia were either locally produced or American. There weren't quite so many British cars, but they were definitely coming sort of third in that lineup. It was largely due to the taxes and legislation for locally produced vehicles. Let's have a look at the first one, which is over here. It's a 1929 Chrysler 77. It's absolutely gorgeous. Interesting how they chose to do the two-tone in a sort of more flowing way rather than following the bodywork as they did in later cars. Lovely dicky seat. Look at that dashboard. Dashboard's fabulous. And even the little Art Deco wings on the bonnet there. Just gorgeous. Anyway, let's see what's over here. I'll cover the bus later. But this is, of course, a Ford Model A. This one's from 1930. It's got this rather nice wooden bodywork on the back and a builder's van. Goodness. If a builder's vans look this good these days, I think the world would be a much better place. As usual, it's been restored far beyond original, I would assume, but even the original toolkit is present. Look at the wooden bracing on the inside of the roof there, just to give it a bit more strength, I suppose. Yet another Ford Model A here. This is a... This one is one year later. It's a different body style as well, being a Victoria leatherback, as the sign shows us. This next one is also a Ford Model A. It's very proudly showing its nationality there. And there's a third Ford here in this nice two-tone. And that's more of a saloon, but a two-door as well. This taxi here is very interesting. It's known as a Tudor Saloon. And of course it's done up in yellow cab company colours, complete with original taxi meter. Here we can see on this Ford the side valve engine with the spark plugs coming out the top because of course the valves are in the side so you have to put them somewhere and moving on to the next car it's yet another Ford Model A in this rather nice convertible doctor's coupe style this Peugeot is very interesting it's a 1923 Peugeot delivery van done up as a bicycle delivery van, because of course Peugeot did originally make bicycles, as well as numerous other things. And this one is a Munro. I'd never heard of a Munro until recently, but look at that engine. Everything's on the outside. You can see the push rods there, and even the flywheel is exposed. Never get that today. Looks almost like a Ford Model T in a way but you can see the motor meter on, the, on top of the radiator there and here's the information about it, complete with a spark plug. This MG SA is absolutely gorgeous, the restoration on it is exquisite. The SA was the 2 litre 6 cylinder model. This is one of the 23 which were imported into Australia. I don't think they made a great number at all, but... It just looks so good in this two-tone colour scheme. The purple complements the burgundy colour somehow. Look at the engine. And that engine. It's just so shiny. In fact, the whole car is incredibly shiny. Absolutely wonderful. 
Really sporty design as well. This here is a 1940 Ford Deluxe with, with a very jet age dashboard and this sort of sleek coupe styling. You can see how this one here, which is the 35 model, so just five years older, is almost completely different in design with the smaller cabin, the larger vents on the side and the exposed headlamps rather than having them inset into the wings as they did later. Just over here we have this 1927 Chevrolet followed by this very brightly coloured 36 Chevrolet Roadster. Again a very 1930s design but not quite as opulent as the Chrysler we saw right at the beginning but following on from that this next Chevrolet here this Roadster is from 1926 and as you can see the design changed really considerably over the 10 year period. Next we have a 1927 Chevrolet the Capital in the pickup truck form complete with vintage tyre in the back. Need that in the 20s I think on those roads. Here we have a slightly later car a 1934 Chevrolet Master Sedan. Carrying on, we've got a 1913 Ford Model T Speedster with that fabulous horn on the side. And look at the petrol tank, it's oval. That's very nice. The uh, spare wheel in the back looks like an extra wheel, almost. And course we have the characteristic Ford Model A looking nice in pea green with the cream wheels. This is an interesting one, it's a 1929 Hupmobile Model A. Also a Model A, we've got plenty of Model A's here but look at that interior, that sort of almost classically styled dashboard and even down to the door handles. The interior ones are a sight to behold. seat of course. Very shiny. Most of them are so well restored. This one has no problems with shine though. It's a 1939 Packard 8 Tourer and the owner seems to be very proud of its state which is certainly patinated that's for sure. As you can see the engine is this enormous straight 8 side valve with what looks like a tiny carburetor on the side. Anyway, let's have a look at the interior. Interesting that they chose to put a huge clock in front of the passenger and of course the enormous speedometer in front of the driver but hardly any other gauges apart from the little temperature and fuel. On now to this really adorable little Morris Cowley. Oh, and bright red engine, gosh. And look at the little SU. It's all brass and it doesn't have an air filter at all. Considering that most of the roads would have been dirt back then, you'd think they'd have put an air filter on it. 1924, this one's from. Just so sweet with the black and cream two-tone colour scheme on it. Something a bit smaller now is this baby Austin, Austin 7. He's clearly worried about the time because he's got a quartz clock attached to his steering wheel. Funny the way they use the uh, head bolt to attach the horn. This being an Australian car show, it's currently boiling hot and I'm roasting under my hat and of course it wouldn't be complete without an overpowering smell of burning sausages. And it's got its own little mini motor meter on the radiator cap. This is another vehicle of which one doesn't hear very often. It's a 1933 Rio Flying Cloud. It's clearly got a lot of ventilation in the bonnet and the interior is beautifully restored. You can see the umbrella style handbrake poking out the middle of the dashboard there. It's got a six cylinder engine which develops 85 horsepower, which was pretty good for the time, I'd say.
literally there's another Ford Model T over here. This one made in Canada, it appears. Again, a Model A, this time in convertible form, and some even older transportation devices. This Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost certainly takes the prize for one of the largest vehicles here, and it does look fabulous with that polished aluminium on top with the canary yellow paintwork underneath. The interior of the Rolls is certainly more notable for the quantity of gauges. There are hundreds of them. I can see a timer there, and there's a normal clock. Fabulous to see that the petrol tank itself gets its own fuel gauge with a central London postcode printed on the face. Next to the Rolls-Royce we have one of its competitors from the 20s in the form of this also 1923 Austin 20 Tourer and even has its own branded motor meter. It's huge. And look at that rear screen for the luxuriating rear passengers. The engine looks like it's been beautifully cleaned up, but not too much. It's got just enough dirt to show it works properly. Despite only having four cylinders, the um, big Austins of this period weren't actually too sluggish. And then to this rather brown Ford V8 Roadster. Although I don't think that engine has quite enough bolts securing the heads on. Again, with this coupe style and the little dicky seat at the back. These two Ford Mercury V8s are rather later but seem to share the same engine. Cleverly packaged to have both the carburetor and the dynamo in the center of the V. You can see how the stylish aerodynamic bodies of the 40s and 50s were starting to catch on with this one, even in 39. We've got a Ford Woody here. I would call it a traveller, but it's more of a station wagon. Fabulous panelling. Turning around, we've got this Ford V8 Coupe in the Doctor's Coupe style. Here we have a 1940 Buick Super, which seems to have been shot a few times. Looking at the engine, you can see they were clearly proclaiming the wonders of an overhead valve system, calling it the valve in head. And since it was produced during the war, I would assume that this plate would tell you something about that. Very stylish, even with the bonnet open, which opens on both sides. The lamp. The swivelling lamp on the A-pillar here is very reminiscent of American police cars of this era. This 1923 Alfa Romeo is absolutely gorgeous. It's even got its own period jacking system on each corner, which was made by Westinghouse, it appears. The engine design is so different to all of its contemporaries. 
All the surfaces are so clean and smooth. It's even got what looks like an updraft carburetor, which is a bit unusual. This Packard Club sedan is certainly a luxurious model. Look at that green paintwork and the red pinstriping all over it. Unusual colour scheme to have mustard coloured wheels, that I'm sure it's period correct. Here's another Packard, this time a 1700, and that mascot is fabulous with its etched glass wings. The material they've used to trim the interior is unusual, though. it's almost like the West of England cloth used in later British cars. That must be how it looked more than 20 years ago. What a transformation. This one has red wheels and white walls. This is an amazing looking Packard, this 1923 model. Just so stylish with that dicky seat there. Even got a cover on the spare wheel. Heaven forbid that should get dirty. Oh, and look, there's a door for the golf clubs. Just a gorgeous bit of 20s design there. Again, we've got another late 30s Packard here. With that very big engine and very small carburetor. Lovely split screen on these. There's the interior, just the same as the other one. But this one is like the, the unrestored one, but in rather a better state. Moving on to this 29 Buick, complete with the ancient Greek god Hermes as the bonnet mascot this time. Nice convertible form. Very low distributor on that engine. This Buick is from 1936 and has even more chrome than the last one. It's been very nicely restored. And uh, there are some interesting people here, but look at that engine. Even the HT leads look original with their braided insulation. It's a huge square speedometer. It's almost square, sort of oblong. Again, another Buick. This one is 1929, and it's the Victoria model. So I assume that has something to do with the rear, which we are looking at now, and nice trunk on the back as well. This Studebaker really is a sight to behold. It's the model called the Commander, and the way that bat tapers in towards the middle, like a sort of earlier boat tail, it's just gorgeous, and the restoration on it is fabulous. The way they've carried the red from the dashboard, which has a radio, to the bumper brackets. What an attention to detail. Yeah, so this one was, it's an Australian built car and it's unique. It's the only one in existence. And look at that picture of it from 1971. Even tried to chrome the tyres. Got a Rolls-Royce Phantom 1 here from 1927. This one actually has an interesting story. It was converted into an ambulance during the Second World War whilst in Australia and then was later converted back into its saloon form. Got some commercial vehicles over here. Somebody's testing the horn. This one is a Ford. Sorry, I'm not much good on commercial vehicles. <laughs> on the other hand, I can tell you that this is an AEC Regent bus, as was used all over Sydney oh, for a very long time, even up into the 70s, if not longer. Such a classic piece of design with the green and cream and the double-decker layout. There's the inside. Nice spacious interior with high ceilings. Mm. Complete with old adverts. And I love the, the uh, trafficating hands that pop out. He's just got this Ford running. I think he's on his way out, but it certainly vibrates a bit. He's adjusting the timing now on the steering wheel with the advance and retard lever.
Here's a vehicle which would certainly be a bit of a restoration project. I like where the roof is tied on with rope. Certainly a barn find. It would almost be a shame to restore it. I don't think I'll tread on that running board. Look at that interior. It hasn't even removed the dirt from it. The dirt is probably almost as old as the vehicle itself. It's a 1924 Dodge. I think that'll start up with a bit of petrol. This Morris Miner, the pre-war miner, is actually quite interesting. It's an Australian Holden-bodied car, and it's the only four-door convertible left in the world. I don't know how many were made, but it's certainly unique now. And uh, I'd rather like the paint job. It's a running restoration, and the owner has been getting it back on the road over the past few years, so that's nice to see. We've got this Chevrolet commercial vehicle over here, which is nice and shiny and still has its wooden body on the back. It's next to this Ford and over here we've got an astonishing array of original oil cans. And look at that. Look at the ratchet on that crane. It's a proper tow truck. Some of them might need it to get home. This Chevrolet seems to have come all the way from South Australia, which is about 2,000 kilometres. Nice Oldsmobile, also complete with mattresses on the back. Advertising the manufacturer of bedding. And look at those turn signals. Finally, to finish off, we have yet another Model A Ford this time in this very nice red colour scheme. So that's about all we've got time for this video. I will leave you with the wonderful Chrysler 77 from 1929 as it departs the show. I will say thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Sutherland pre-war classic car show and I will say ta-ta for now.